diphtheria, this is that classic leathery membrane on the back of their throat. And these patients also come in with this big anterior lymphadenopathy. Um, it's probably a very easy test question because it's got this very distinct look, which we'll show you on the next slide. Um, and don't forget that not only are you treating it with the antitoxin, but you're also going to give antibiotics to the people around them. These are from endemic countries, unvaccinated people. We don't see it that often here, unless it's a population who is coming from elsewhere. And here is an image of those two, uh, excuse me, there's an image of that leathery pseudomembrane on the back of their throat. Um, and then because of that lymphadenopathy, they get that classic quote unquote bull neck. Bacterial tracheitis. This is croup that can kill. Um, so patient comes in with maybe previously you'd seen them and it seemed like a mild croup, but now they come back in looking so toxic and so sick. You've got to be thinking bacterial tracheitis. And these patients are probably going to get intubated pretty quickly. It's not that common. Most common, these patients are going to come in with just regular croup. But if they look particularly ill, especially in those kids less than three, you got to be thinking about bacterial tracheitis and you're getting ENT on board. You may have to intubate them in the emergency department. You may need to take them up for a bronch, but these are very sick looking kiddos. Epiglottitis. This is a disease that used to be of kids, but then because of vaccinations has now become demographic wise more of an adult disease. The three that I have seen have all been in adults. Um, they all kind of similar are sitting there leaning forward, not wanting to lay down. And the thing that was pathomonic for me on these exams was pain when I anteriorly moved that thyroid cartilage. They looked uncomfortable. They were having a hard time with their oral secretions. They were short of breath. Um, and that's what really triggered me into saying, oh, this is what this is. You're going to get your ENT colleagues on board um, and they may need to be intubated. And oftentimes when you don't have ENT, that happens in your emergency department, but just be prepared for a very difficult intubation. And this is that terrifying look at the cords on the left and on the right, you can't even see. It looks like they barely passed what looks like a bougie through there. Um, plain films. This you actually may get because the patient may not tolerate laying flat. So in epiglottitis, this is a, a patient who I might have my x-ray tech come over and shoot a portable cross table to get a view of that epiglottis and see if it looks huge just to sort of as I'm preparing to secure this patient's airway.